All right, we want to take you live now to Peel Region, where Peel Police are announcing the results of Project Sledgehammer, the largest firearms bust in the force's history. Let's listen in. Part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples have inhabited and cared for this land and continue to do so today. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabek, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwa-Chippewa peoples, the land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land and by doing so, give our respect to its first inhabitants. Today, we are here to share the results of Project Sledgehammer. At the conclusion of this announcement, there will be an opportunity for questions. I would ask that you limit your questions to one question and one follow-up and to be specific to Project Sledgehammer. A media relations officer can be available after the end of the conference for any unrelated questions. A media release will be issued shortly after the conclusion of this conference and will include links to all of the information provided here today. A full video of the conference will also be available on the Peel Regional Police YouTube channel. Today, we will hear from the following speakers, Chief Nishan Duryapa, Detective Sergeant Chris Fiore, Deputy Chief Nick Malinovich, and Regional Chair Nando Yanika, Chair of the Police Services Board. I would now like to call upon Chief Duryapa. Thank you, Richard, and uh, I appreciate everyone being here today uh, for this announcement of the results of Project Sledgehammer. Uh, this project is another example of the evidence of police services' commitment to tackling and fighting illegal firearms possession, as well as drug trafficking, not just here in our community, but across the GTA. Uh, joining me today is Chair Nando Yanika, Chair of the Appeal Regional Police Services Board, but also Chair of the Region Appeal. Thank you, sir, for being here. Uh, Deputy che Chief Nick Malinovich, who is the head of our Regional Investigative Services Command and Emergency Services. Mr. Rob Serpier, the Executive Director of Appeal Police Services Board. Uh, Mr. Omar Khan from the board as well, but also have Detective Sergeant Chris Fiore, who's going to be speaking later, who oversees uh, our Specialized Enforcement Bureau, who has the details of the investigation as well. This operation was led by the exceptional, I'm going to say the exceptional officers, women and men, who focus on illegal firearms possession, drug trafficking, and belong to our Specialized Enforcement Bureau. Needless to say, illegal firearms, which we've seen right across the GTA in multiple announcements, are connected to multiple crimes in our community that have significant impact. Today we're talking about drug trafficking, but it also leads to deadly outcome here in Peel. And the work of our officers on a daily basis continue to negate and turn the dial down on these pressures that we can say are not tolerated here in Peel. And I want to thank them specifically for that. Uh, they unfortunately can't be in front of the camera, so we have the privilege of speaking to uh, them. But we want to highlight on what it prevents in our community. The surge of illegal firearms, not just here in Peel and the GTA, pose a significant threat. In reality, here in Peel, we have seized more firearms than we have in any year previously. On average, we're seeing a, an illegal firearm seized by our, our officers uh, just slightly over 30 hours, every 30 hours we're seizing a firearm. This isn't exclusive to the Peel area, but the GTA and the province itself. The number of shootings we've seen here in Peel exceed more than we've ever seen in years previously. I can say the majority of these legal firearms are smuggled into Ontario through criminal networks and the origins we know are from the US. And these criminal networks are looking to capitalize on our community to make profit, victimize the vulnerable. Approximately 90% of these firearms that we seize are directly traced back to the US. And I can say in reality, the remaining 10% uh, are likely also from the US. They just reflect the ability of the difficulty we have on tracing some of these firearms because they've been de-identified. When these firearms arrive in our community and become more easily accessible, the rate of violence and vulnerability in our community is undeniable. It leads to devastating consequences, not just for the victims, 
but it has a ripple effect on people's reality and perception of safety here in Peel. While our service has and will continue to work with partners to fill the gaps that are causing this trend, we will also continue to devote resources necessary to stop this. And this project, Project Sledgehammer, is one of the examples of the gold standards that our police enforcement do in defense of our community. You'll hear from Project Sledgehammer the arrest of five individuals and 160 charges, the seizure of numerous firearms, a variety of illegal weapons, prohibited magazines, several hundred rounds of ammunition, and specifically in this investigation, the seizure of 53 Glock selector switches, which turn handguns into fully automatic weapons. More importantly, the arrest signifies the prevention of crime, which we can only speculate what would have happened across the GTA. Each item you see displayed actually symbolizes a potential victim, a community that has been prevented from seeing harm. These items aren't just sitting on a table. They represent a carjacking, a home invasion, armed robberies, and multiple firearms offenses that would have plagued the GTA and Peel region. Each individual family and community member here in Peel deserves more. We want them to have a safe, vibrant community for businesses, work, for youth to go to school, for people to feel safe at home alone. And removing these firearms and drugs from our neighborhoods is one key element to making sure that we can achieve that. The individuals of our Specialized Enforcement Bureau are remarkable, and this is just one example of their astounding, astounding work that they do. I do want to acknowledge the partnership and support from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Waterloo Regional Police, and York Regional Police for their assistance in the execution of warrants during this project. Uh, without their collaboration, uh, we would not have been able to do this. It underscores the ability for police agencies to support each other to tackle these issues that are GTA-wide. Lastly, I do want to acknowledge the continued support of Repeal Police Services Board for ensuring that we're advocated for and resourced for, and the Region Appeal for their ongoing support so we can continue to do this work. It highlights that when we do have the resources, we can actually do some work and put a dent in this. Now I'm pleased to turn the mic over to Detective Sergeant Chris Fiore of our Specialized Enforcement Bureau to discuss the details of Project Sledgehammer. Thank you, Chief. Afternoon. I'm Detective Sergeant Chris Fiore, and I'm the officer in charge of the Gun and Gang Team within the Specialized Enforcement Bureau. As the Chief mentioned, this investigation started with a traffic stop by a uniformed officer. As a result of that, a 20-year-old man was charged with various firearms offenses and later released on an ankle bracelet. As a result of that arrest, my team initiated a follow-up investigation. During this investigation, Associates of the first suspect were identified, and evidence was obtained that led investigators to believe that they were involved in firearms and drug trafficking. Search warrants were obtained and executed at three residences in Brampton, one residence in Waterloo, and one storage facility within Caledon. The results of those search warrants were the seizure of 11 firearms, including assault rifles, handguns, and a submachine gun, which is displayed here, approximately 900 rounds of ammunition, 85 prohibited devices, including Glock selector switches, which, as the Chief mentioned, can transform a semi-automatic handgun to fully automatic, and high-capacity drum magazines. Approximately 200 grams of cocaine was seized with an estimated street value of $20,000, 20 grams of opium, 80 oxycodone pills, and 100 other unknown pills that were sent for testing. Five subjects were arrested and have been charged with various offenses. Navdeep Nagra, 20 years old of Brampton, has been charged with 11 counts of unauthorized possession of a firearm, 8 counts of possession of a loaded firearm, 84 counts of possession of a prohibited device, and 2 counts of failing to comply with a release order. He was held pending a bail hearing. Ravneet Nagra, 22 years old of Brampton, has been charged with unauthorized possession of a firearm, possession of a loaded firearm, and possession of a prohibited device. He was released with a future court date. Narinder Nagra, 61 years, of Brampton, is charged with unauthorized possession of a firearm, possession of a loaded firearm, and possession of a prohibited device. 
She was released with a future court date. Ranveer Erich, 20 years old of Brampton, has been charged with nine counts of unauthorized possession of a firearm, six counts of possession of a loaded firearm, 30 counts of possession of a prohibitive device, and possession of a pro of property obtained by crime. He was held in custody pending a bail hearing. Pavneet Nahal, 21 years old of Brampton, has been charged with two counts of possession for the purpose of trafficking and failed to comply with a release order. He has been released with a future court date. At this time, we have received the tracing reports back for the seized firearms, which show that four originated in the United States, five originated in Canada, two of which were stolen, and two could not be traced due to serial number um, issues. This concludes my overview of this investigation. If there are any questions at the end, please note that this case is still before the courts, and as such, I will not be able to speak to many specifics of the investigation. I will also not be speaking to any of the investigative techniques that were utilized. Thank you, and I will turn it over to Deputy Chief Milinovich. Good afternoon, and thank you, Chris. And thank you to everybody who has joined us here today. On the heels of the conversation and what Chris just highlighted, I think it's important for us to emphasize two critical points that will illustrate the value of the outcomes of what you see here before you today. The first is the urgent issue of illegal firearms in our communities and the rise in their prevalence. As you have heard, the firearms seized in this investigation represent a significant threat to our community. These weapons could have inflicted devastating harm to our community. And the reality is, is we are facing a situation unlike any we ever have here in Peel, across the GTA, and throughout the province. The Chief mentioned we are seizing an illegal firearm approximately every 30 hours here in Peel. In Peel, we have already exceeded the number of illegal firearms that we seized, that we seized all of last year. From January to September of this year, we've taken 157 illegal firearms off the street. That makes an 87% increase in our seizures. In the first nine months of this year alone, we've recorded 119 shootings. Again, an alarming 80% increase. Comparative to last year, that's an 80 percent increase. I just want to emphasize that point. Tragically, 43 people have been shot. The results of today's work are important because of what you see here before you, but the reality is, is projects like this prevent harm to our community. And this is the mission of people like Chris and the team that he represents. And again, I would like to commend them for all of their work. The second point I would like to address is that this investigation involves, as you've heard, a variety of individuals who were already out on some form of judicial release. Two of them were on release orders at the time of their arrests, and one was actually facing firearms-related offenses and the other drug offenses. This continues to be an all-too-common theme in what police officers and investigators see. Nearly 50% of everybody we arrest for violent crimes out in our community are on some form of release, which is why, as the Chief said, we will continue to deliver the gold standard in policing excellence and enforcement, and at the same time, we will continue to advocate and address the gaps that result in the issues that I just discussed. Once again, thank you to our team that's responsible for today. Thank you to our police services board and really all of the leadership in our community who's advocating towards change in the issues that I just discussed. On that note, I would like to invite Chair Nando Yanika to the podium for his remarks. Thank you. All right. We have been listening in to Peel Police announcing details of the results of Project Sledgehammer, which is the largest firearms bust in the force's history.